What's up, Internets? My name is Matt. I host the Circle Button Podcast, a podcast about PlayStation and all things video games. Check out the link if you're interested. Today, I finally got in the mail the Bloodborne Collector's Edition Guide. This is uh, published and printed by Future Press. They also, well, that light doesn't work for a damn. It's glary as hell. Um, they also did the strategy guides for Dark Souls 1 and 2, neither of which I have, but I figured I'd pick this one up. For anybody who has played a Souls game, they know that these games don't explain themselves very well. <laughs> the lore, the story, the items, the characters, a lot of the information on these games requires a lot of digging, including the story. Um, so I figured I'd pick this one up. I was really, really looking forward to Bloodborne. Kind of a strange uh, case with this um, guide, actually. Bloodborne actually released almost a month ago to the day. Today is April 22nd. This game came out March 24th. Um, I believe they had to push the publishing of the guide back. They added like 130 or so pages to it. Um, after a day one patch, I guess they wanted to include some details of the day one patch. They also um, added an interview with the game's creator, uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki as well as an art segment. This thing is like 530-some pages, I believe, if memory serves. I just got this in the mail today. Uh, I just got home, and uh, it was wrapped in cellophane, which I tore off to save you the, you know, 30 seconds of me fumbling doing that with one hand. Anyhow, um, there are codes on the back of this sheet. Um, it includes the, there's a digital copy, you get a, get a digital version of the guide, you also get a um, PlayStation 4 theme specific to this guide. I don't believe you can buy it separate. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's take a look at this guide. And sorry, I'm doing this with one hand. Give me a break. God, I can already hear you in the comments. Just kidding, okay? Just relax though, okay? Here's the binding. The uh, It is a hard... Hard book cover, that's nice. Nice iconography of Bloodborne there. Um, it's kind of got like this matte rubbery type finish. You know, you know that kind of finish. Fear the old blood. Made whole by the blood. Live by the blood, etc. And it's all black pages, just kidding. Whoops, <laughs> well that was quick. There's Eileen the Crow. NPC, I guess it could be a hunter. It does have a a hunter that slayed that that NPC. Hunter must hunt. I figured I would just kind of flip through this book a little bit. And I should start by saying, well, let's start with the chapter overview here. Dark Beast Paul, or whoever that was. I think that's Dark Beast Paul. Um, like I said, this guide came out a bit after the fact. Let's turn this thing off. My god, this glare. I'm sorry, okay? I can already hear you in the comments complaining about this. Well, and for good reason, I can't even focus. Anyhow, um, this game came out, like I said, almost a month ago. Um, I already got the platinum for this game, so <laughs> it's a bit after the fact, but god, had I had this guide, I, I think the platinum took me, I don't know, 85, 90 hours? This guide probably would have cut that, I'd say, I don't know, who knows, five, ten hours? Who knows, who knows really? I mean, the game is going to just punch your Johnson repeatedly, so that's really the name of the game. Training Manual, Chapter 1, Hunting Grounds, Chapter 2. This is where the rules of the game are laid bare. Is that what it says? Yeah. Prepare to get your ass kicked, really, is what that should say. Bestiary, that's cool. Hopefully they have, yeah, they do have reveals, uh, weaknesses, so what the bosses are susceptible to. Hopefully they, they also have boss strategies, because uh, some of those bosses are, oh man, a real challenge, a real pain in the ass. Chalice Dungeons. Let me say two things, and I'll flip through this as I do so. If, for anybody who's played a Souls game, they probably know... They, this Hunter's Dependency, I believe that's what they added to the end of this thing. After uh, having to uh, delay it a few weeks. Anyway, for anybody who knows, um, Souls games are kind of, I don't want to say counterintuitive, but they kind of challenge your natural reaction 
on boss fights. Amazing art direction in this game, just incredible. I mean, you roll up on something that looks like this guy, and he's, you know, like slashing your face off. Your natural response is to move back. Get rid get used to that, son. Get used to that screen right there. Um, anyways, you roll up on a big boss, your natural reaction is to move back. But a lot of times, the best strategy in Souls games is to move towards them and uh, evade them either one direction or another. You kind of have to read their behavioral tendencies, get their patterns down, know when their guard is down and know when to strike and get the hell out of there as well, but combat explained. See, I bet a lot of this goes through some basic combat strategies of Bloodborne. This is a game that really is trying to teach you the hard way. <laughs> it bends you over its knee and it's like, learn, boy. Learn or die. I mean, it really is. Visceral attacks. Get that down, son. Get that down, boy. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of people look, watching this video are just wanting to see the unboxing of sorts of the strategy guide. So you already probably know the visceral attack. Very, very critical element of the game. At least it was for me. There's obviously a system of interrupting um, an enemy's attack towards you. You do that with a weapon. You shoot them. Leaves them open to a visceral attack. Hit him with an L1, and then you roll in with the R1. Go into their soul and rip it out with a visceral. Uh, what else was I going to talk about? Anyway, I'll just keep flipping through this. Multiplayer didn't really do that a whole bunch. It's nice. They've got top-down maps. They also mark on the map where certain items are. That's great. This would have been just so helpful. This would have been helpful like a month ago. Appreciate that. I free appreciate that delay, I must say. I probably will play this game through once more at some point. I think I need to give myself a cooldown period <laughs> because I went rage mode on this thing like multiple times. I must say. Chalice Dungeons, that's what I was going to talk about. I just want to clear a misnomer, a misperception regarding Chalice Dungeons in Bloodborne. And again, I was going like hitting this thing like a crack pipe when it first came out, and I haven't played it since I've uh, since I've got the platinum. But when I first played it, there was a lot of misperception on this game. I think part of it was because this damn guide wasn't out. I honestly think that a lot of people were just doing a lot of trial and error on this game and kind of uncovering. There's a lot of, like, obtuse secrets. This game just does not explain itself very well in some ways, which is cool. It's kind of like a throwback NES game in that sense. Like, it's a lot of word of mouth and trial and error and people kind of uncovering different uh, various things about this game. Um, but Chalice Dungeons... Um, there are randomly generated chalice dungeons, but only root chalice dungeons are randomly generated. Okay, food for thought. I say that because later in the game, if you're going for the platinum, for example, there are critical items in various layers of the dungeons, and some of them are just in the, uh, like the defiled, uh, I'm trying to remember what they were called, defiled dungeon chalice, I think it was and you don't need a randomly generated dungeon to get some of those critical items. One of which is a rune, or not a rune, it's a, uh, a blood gem. Another one is the beast claw. I believe those were in the defiled dungeon, believe. Believe that what it was, was, it was what it was, I could be wrong. Forbidden Woods, yeah. This map would have been helpful, my god. Talk about wandering around and just dropping those damn coins for no reason like that helped me. Yeah, Forbidden Woods, a.k.a. Where the Hell Am I Headed, part two and three here. Yeah, there's another... So strange with this game. The maps, as you look at them top down, they look somewhat linear, but they don't feel linear at all. I really, really liked the map design in this game really did. 
Anyway, I'll go through this a bit quicker. I don't have to spend all day. Ooh, here's something cool. This must be the bestiary. You go to the beginning. Spoiler warning, I, I will put that in the uh, description here. It's a lot of NPCs, really cool NPCs. I kind of wish they would have explored the NPCs a bit more in this game. They were really cool, but a lot of them just didn't have didn't have a lot of dialogue. Oh, these are just enemies. Sorry, these aren't NPCs. Um, a lot of them just didn't have a lot of... That's badass. Didn't have a lot of dialogue, and I... Again, a lot of the lore of this game, you just have to search through and read the text of the items and the weapons and the pickups and all these things. This game doesn't explain itself very well, including its story. It's the bosses and the bestiary and other nightmares. Still one of the coolest boss fights of the game, in my opinion. One of the absolute coolest boss designs, just character designs. Such a badass design. Um, also, I forgot to mention, two particular fellows of note helped immensely on this guide. One of which, they're both YouTube dudes, actually, and they do amazing walkthroughs on all the Souls games. Um, if you went to Future Presses, like YouTube, um, they both have commentary, rigorous commentary in copious detail. One of them is Marcus, I forget his last name, but he's Epic Name Bro, otherwise known as ENB on YouTube. You can hit him up on Twitter, I'll probably link them in the video too. Really, really just deep appreciation for what these games are, really how they're designed, and, and I think that they just do a great service to how to play these games. I used ENB's uh, videos immensely when I was doing my, my Platinum Trophy. I just really like how he does videos. He explains, he just goes through meticulously each item in the game, their significance to the lore, their significance to characters, and it just, it, he does a great service to the games. And they, I don't know which, like who did what section of this guide, but, um, so ENB was one of them. The other one was Franz, I believe his YouTube name is uh, a German spy. They both do incredibly great YouTube videos. That was like the first boss that I thought was lame, but it was kind of nice to get a reprieve from the persistent punch in the balls that most of these... Dark Beast Pad. Spoilers, spoilers, going into the boss fights. That's cool. That's really cool. Shows you item drops and uh, basic and other basic information susceptibilities and such and so shadow of Yalman. three of those bastards uh, amygdala I remember piercing that dude in the jawbone a couple times is a badass character design really liked this dude Martyr Ligarius, Ligarius, however you want to say it. I believe he was in Kanehurst. It's an optional area in the game. Total badass. Really, really cool story. Rom, the Bacchus Spider. Actually, you see all these eyes here. Another thing that I want to kind of look through this guide on, like I said, I just opened this, cracked this, this baby. Um, insight. It, I remember early on people were speculating that the more insight you had, it spiked the difficulty of the game. I never noticed that once in this game. Turn that light back on. Never noticed that once. I did notice this game just destroyed me, though, re repeatedly, so... Did anyone else have that experience that this game was kind of like getting kicked in the balls several times and you were just volunteering up your own package for the reaping? This was a pain in the ass, boy, I tell you what. I tell you what, it's an optional boss, but still, if you're going for the platinum, you have to do all the bosses, obviously. This guy was a dumbass. Nicolaj. Cool, though. It's a cool design. Mergo's wet nurse. That was a badass introduction to a boss. 
Again, the artistic uh, direction and design of this game is like second to none. This is the best game of the current generation. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It is absolutely phenomenal game. If I was going on a 20 point scale, I'd probably give it a 9.6. If I was the reviewing kind. Spoilers! Spoilers! Spoilers, I know. Spoilers! 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 Chalice Dungeon bosses. Of course, there are bosses in the story mode, like in the campaign mode, that are specific to the campaign, such as this, this dude right here, Moon Presence. Uh, there are also dungeon bosses that are specific. You can only find them in the dungeons. That is one of them. One of the coolest boss designs in the whole game. Watchdog of the Old Lords. I just call him Bingo. Of Flame and Pain. Keeper of the Old Lords. I kind of hacked that, that lady up pretty good. Didn't have much problem with her. That was kind of a pain in the ass. Not too bad. This dude, oh my god. I don't know if people had the degree of difficulty I did. I can't even tell you how many times I attempted to kill this this guy right here. That is the oh, death shrouds. That guy was a real, maybe the most difficult boss in the game for me personally. He's got two different, I guess, forms. Oh man, a real pain in the ass. I'm getting like PTSD just looking at this guy. This is like my abuser. My god, aberrant beast, badass design. Don't know how many times I can say that. Freak show. Yeah, looks like they're quite bloodletting beast. Really cool. Looks like they're quite copious with their detail. Yarn Yarnum Queen, Thumerian Queen. She's uh, she's the very last boss battle. When you do everything you need to do in the dungeons for the platinum, believe. I mean, it took me, God, I don't even know, ten hours or more to, just to do the dungeons, just for one gold trophy. It's the hardest fought gold trophy of my life, son. Tell you what, Chalice Dungeons. Get a good look at that awesome. Art, design, and direction. Just second to none. I really would, should look up and see who the artists, some of the concept artists were for this game. Some of the best in the industry, in my opinion. In my humble opinion. Anyway, I don't have to go through everything. Ooh, trophy guide. Um, ooh, insight. I want to read on that. <laughs> I'll do that later. I'll save your time. So, here's some of the NPCs. There is an NPC section. Alfred, he's a critical character. Willem. Anyway, um, I wanted to quickly go to the back. I'm hoping there is... Hold on. Doing this with one arm, okay? Get off my ass. I can already hear you people in the comments section getting all pissed off. I know. Just kidding, okay? Just be, be. Nightmare slain. So here's the bonus section of the guide. Um, I believe this was added after they had to make the decision to, um, to delay it. Looks like there is an interview fairly lengthy with Hidetaka Miyazaki. That broham. He is the creative director of Bloodborne. All right, now that this is something I was looking forward to, if this glare would allow me to look at it. Hold on. People say the wooden shield gets more and more important the more times you play through the game. Why is that? Can we read this? Um. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Here's some wooden shield, business, light, glare, god, I'm sorry. This game is the wooden shield, the only shield in the game, and it doesn't seem like a very reliable piece of equipment, but some people say it gets more and more important the more times you play through the game with it. Why is that? 
The game's battle system relies on the idea that you're going to take some hits now and then, which is what I think leads to ideas like that, but anyway, it just serves to demonstrate that we're in no way downplaying repeat runs through the game. Alright, that really wasn't the explanation I thought we might find on the wooden shield. <laughs> Why do you have a wooden shield? Uh, you know, because the game's hard and... different playthroughs through the game. I bet this is a fascinating um, interview, though. I bet you. Awesome art design. Saw Spears, I don't know what that one's called. What is that thing? Oh, yeah, I know what that thing is. Yeah. Really doesn't have an art, like, an art uh, port segment of this guide, which is kind of... Humanity serves as a kind of shackle, keeping the transformation in its place. Doesn't really have an art section proper, which I would have really, really liked to see. Art like that deserves, like, its own page, or two pages, perhaps. Like this. But we need more like that. Looks like the entrance into the Forbidden Woods. Was that Forbidden Ones? I believe that was Forbidden Ones. No, that's not Forbidden Ones. Uh, bugger. A wooded area. There is the last page of the guide. Alright, here we go. Franz and Marcus. Those two total badasses. Anyhow, uh, I just wanted to give you kind of a quick gander, meander, if you will, through the official strategy guide for Bloodborne. This is the, again, this is the collector's edition guide. Um, does come with a theme specific to the guide, and I don't think you can buy it separately otherwise. Um, also has a digital version. There are codes on the back, which I'm not going to turn this over. Um, printed by Future Press, the suggested retail is $34.99 in the United States. I got this for $23. Thank you, Amazon. Next time, uh, Future Press, you might want to release your guide with the game. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Really, really nice guide, though. Over 500 pages. Quite thick. I mean, this thing is just to the brim with info. Copious amounts of detail. Which, again, I'm sure there's just a ton of lore and explanation on the story. That's really, at this point, why I want why I wanted this guide. Again, I got the Platinum, so really kind of the 101 of bosses and uh, NPCs, areas, etc. I don't really need to know anymore, per se, but I really am looking forward to uh, going through the guide, reading some of the story elements, um... You know, the story arcs and the characters and etc, etc. So, pretty awesome. I will leave you with this because the game will leave you with this. Undoubtedly, you died. Thanks for watching, kids. Later.